In this experiment, we will be measuring the Gaussian beam profile of a helium neon laser beam. The Gaussian beam profile of a helium neon laser beam is a very important parameter because it defines the diameter of the beam that can be subsequently used in calculations for determining beam divergence, focus spot size, irradiance, uh, etc. If we pan over to this diagram here, we can show what the Gaussian distribution looks like. Gaussian distribution starts off at a maximum in the center and tapers off exponentially down to uh, what we call the 1 over E squared points, okay, the point at which the intensity of the laser beam drops to 1 divided by E squared or 0 0.135 uh, times the maximum intensity. So in this experiment, what we're going to do is take a helium neon laser beam, expand it to about a 1 inch or so diameter, and then using a linear translation stage and a, and a photo detector, we're going to measure that actual distribution for, a, for the helium neon laser that's included in your kit. Now, if we focus in on the experiment here, what we have is a helium neon laser. We have that uh, shining into a microscope objective mounted. Okay, the microscope objective serves to expand the laser beam. And what we've done is we've expanded that beam to a diameter of roughly one inch. Okay? And what we've done over here is we've taken our power meter and created a, an approximate one millimeter slit out of masking tape. Okay? That will allow us to sample the laser beam as we move the detector across in, the, uh, in this direction here. Okay? So what we're going to do is scan the detector across the aperture of the laser beam and uh, at, inter at even intervals we're going to measure the output power of the laser. Okay, and uh, according to the laboratory experiment, uh, the write-up, um, you will then take that information and graph it and compare it to a theoretical um, exponential, or sorry, Gaussian curve for that particular laser. Um, if we start off, to start off this experiment, what we do is we look for the, the maximum point. Okay, we want to position the micrometer stage so that the power meter reads a maximum value. And if we pan back on the camera a little bit, okay, as I am pressing down the, the button on the power meter, I'm going to slowly adjust the position of the detector head so that I find a maximum. And it looks here like the maximum is going to be about 75.7. Okay. At 75.7, I'm going to call that my I0. If we pan back and look at the curve, okay, the 75.7 is this value here. And what I want to do is move the detector head along so that I find the point at which I have dropped to 1 over E squared, or 0.135 times the 75.7. Okay, and what we're going to do that in uh, 50 thousandths of an inch increments. If you look at the micrometer that we're using in the translation stage here, uh, it, it basically has um, measurements that allow us to measure displacement down to the thousandth of an inch. And if we set up a one, roughly a one millimeter slit on our detector head, one millimeter is roughly about 40 thousandths of an inch. So if we move the detector head about 50 thousandths of an inch, for each measurement, then we should be able to get um, an adequate a number of data points in order to graph that curve. Okay, once we've graphed that curve and we've moved it to the point where we've gotten to 0.135 of our maximum value, they will take that data and we'll graph it and we'll compare it to the theoretical value of the exponential curve. So, um, the camera cannot focus down onto the actual micrometer uh, setting but two rotations of the knob will give you 50 thousandths of an inch movement. So if that, at the first measurement that we're gonna be taking here, okay, we started out at 75.7 uh, .7, and the intensity has dropped down, as you can see, to 72, 71.9 roughly. So we're gonna take that reading. Then we're gonna move it another two rotations or 50 thousandths of an inch and we're going to take another reading. 
okay? It appears that we've gotten down to 69.5 uh, units, okay? Take that measurement and continue on until you get down to 0.135 times the original intensity of the, of the beam. At that point, that is where we define the beam's diameter. If we pan back to the graph here, okay, there, are two, there are two parameters um, that we typically look at when we're describing the laser beam. The first one is something called omega. Okay? Omega is sometimes referred to as uh, the beam waste. Okay, waste meaning the smallest portion, the smallest focused um, diameter of that beam. Okay? The, if omega is one half the beam diameter or the radius, then the overall beam diameter is just twice that. And given that lasers are typically uh, uniformly distributed, okay, uh, or normally distributed, uh, if we just measure the distance from the center point or the maximum down to the 1 over e squared point and then just double that or look at the mirror image, we should get the overall beam diameter for that laser. And that concludes the laser beam profile experiment.